very much. And first of all, I want just to say a few words of welcome uh, and introduction at the start, and then I'm going to hand over to Alex. So first of all, a very warm welcome to the Sloan Hotel, and many thanks to Gregor and his team for hosting us once again. This is a big week for tourism, British uh, Tourism Week here in Slovenia. We held a tourism workshop in the Radensi last week during the Slovenian Tourism Days. Uh, and then today we have uh, British Chamber of Commerce breakfast focused on the tourism sector, very important sector, and great to see so many of you here today. One thing I wanted to say at the start is that the reason why we don't have Yanis Banchina here, many of you know Yanis, who has been president of the British Chamber for most of this year, is that Yanis has recently been appointed to be the acting head of Aokana, the Agency for Management of State-Owned Assets, and to work on a strategy for privatization of uh, majority state-owned assets in this country and to transform Aukana effectively into uh, the Slovenian sovereign holding. So that's a very big job and it's likely to take uh, a few months. And while he's doing that job, then he has stood down from the position of President of the British Chamber of Commerce here in Slovenia. And I'm delighted to say that Alex Payne, the Vice President, has very nobly uh, stepped into the breach and is now acting president of the British Chamber of Commerce. So Alex, thank you very much for doing that. We all will wish Janis very well. It's a very uh, flattering uh, task that he's been assigned. We wish him very well in his assignments, but we also wish Alex very well in his tenure as acting president of the Chamber. I'm not going to say any more than that this morning. Alex will make the introductions of your panel and I hope you enjoy the breakfast and I wish you all luck, those of you in the tourism sector and other sectors during these difficult economic times. Thanks for coming. Thank you very much, Andrew. Um, uh, I feel like the reluctant bride uh, they brought to the altar very hastily. Uh, so if I apologize if, uh, in advance if uh, this doesn't quite work out, but let's see how it goes. Welcome this morning to this uh, uh, business breakfast on the challenges to making Slovenian tourism a leading sector in the economy. Uh, I think it's a very important topic. And as Andrew says, it follows uh, in the wake of a number of discussions that have already been held. Uh, one of the aims of this business breakfast that we decided as a panel to try and introduce also for these business breakfasts is to have a, a parking lot there, which is this flip chart, which at the moment is empty. And the aim is to have three or four key points that we can walk away with and then discuss further uh, in different environments and maybe help to push the agenda forward on behalf of the British Chamber and our participants today. So moving quickly on, I'm going to introduce the panel. I'm the moderator, and my sort of key aim is to keep the thing going and hopefully to bring you into the process uh, in, in, in a more proactive way. Uh, the panelists are, have been selected from two key areas. Two represent the business area, and two essentially represent the more strategic macro uh, level of the tourism uh, agenda. So maybe ladies first, Maya, Dr. Maya Urban, uh, who is one of Slovenia's leading uh, tourism and hospitality, hospitality management educators. Uh, she primarily teaches at the University of Primorska in the Faculty of Tourism there, but has spent 20 years advising governments, private sector, hotels, uh, and other parts of the sector uh, on how to develop the tourism, particularly in terms of standards and certification. Uh, the second person that I'd like to introduce is Mr. Gregor Jamnik, who I think probably most of you know. Uh, most importantly, he is the host uh, for today, as most of our business breakfasts are here, held here in the Hotel Slon. He is the general manager of the Hotel Slon, but very importantly, he has a large amount of experience in the Best Western Group. He is also on the management board uh, of the Best Western Group for Europe, for Central Europe, and he is also the president of the Slovenian Hotel Managers Association. Uh, he is also a board member of the British Chamber of Commerce, and we're actively working with him on this whole tourism agenda, which has been one of our strategic sectoral goals for the year. Uh, the third person that I'd like to introduce to you, and I have to be careful, he's a colleague of mine, he works with me in my own private business, and Tarek runs and heads up uh, one of our smaller divisions, which is single-handedly trying to take on the challenges of tourism development. Uh, Tarek is originally from Bosnia, but has spent much of his time in Washington, D.C. For 17 years there, uh, he was a vice president in an investment bank in Washington, D.C. that specialized in the leisure and real estate investment side of the business. 
and has broad experience in developing large branded projects in Latin America, in North America, and we invited him to join us a couple of years ago. And at the moment, he is working as one of the senior advisors to the Qatari Sovereign Wealth Fund that is investing in one of the largest tourism projects in Montenegro, with I think a total ticket number of about 400 million euros, though he tells me that goes up and down, depending on the mood of the Qataris. Uh, the last person, <coughs> not least, but most importantly, is Marian Fribar. Marian is the director of the Directorate of Tourism for Slovenia and has been one of the principal authors of a strategy which is attempting to take Slovenia's tourism sector forward through to 2016. Uh, he has held the position through three governments, which he uh, told me this morning with a degree of great pride. He said that's quite a challenge and quite an achievement. Uh, uh, but he has also worked hard in the region, working with different tourism development agencies and tourism interested parties in order to look at it from a regional perspective, although, of course, with Slovenia as a principal focus. So maybe I'll just move quickly on. And I wanted to ask one question, if I may, as I sit down now. Uh, I took some statistics. Uh, I looked at your strategy, and just to highlight the strategy, maybe for those who haven't uh, become acquainted with it. So, the main aim is that in 2016, tourism in Slovenia will be entirely based on sustainable development and will be, as a very successful industry of the national economy, a major contributor to our country's social welfare and reputation. Some of the key goals that you've highlighted here are the, to increase competitiveness, to improve the business environment in tourism, and to create an efficient and innovative marketing strategy. Just to start with, the, just to give a scale of the tourism industry, I did some quick numbers on the back of, a, of the paper here. Uh, in 2010, we have an industry which was represented about 3.5 billion euros, approximately 7% of GDP. And I did the numbers and we look at it and we say 3 million arrivals in 2011, roughly representing about 700 euros spend per capita. Um, but on the other side, that's a very good figure. On the other side, I get the impression that the tourism industry is still in large measure owned by a number of domestic companies who are maybe at the moment, given the current crisis, not able to perform at the standard that we would need in order to take this tourism industry forward. How do we change that? Okay. Um, good morning to everybody. Um, well, uh, you raised the most important uh, question uh, at the moment. Uh, okay, uh, we went through, let's say, successful way. Uh, in the last six, seven years, we doubled the total revenue of, of tourism sector. But uh, looking uh, into into future, um, I think the biggest challenge is really to, to attract, to diversify uh, the ownership of uh, Slovenian companies in tourism and uh, to attract uh, foreign direct investors uh, into 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 the sector. Uh, we, we, we are all very much aware that the current situation where the tourism sector is doing well but uh, the owners, the main owners of the, of the destinations or, or the facilities or resorts are some financial holdings uh, which are um, facing uh, some difficulties at the moment and, and it's, it's, it, it might be very, very dangerous and uh, I think we are very much aware of, of, of this issue. Uh, so, uh, as I said, we know our strengths, they lie in our assets, human and natural resources, uh, dedication to perfection, uh, and uh, complete knowledge of the travel industry. But at this point, we have to admit, uh, in the ownership structure, uh, there is something to do. Thank you very much. Maybe I should mention at this point uh, our sponsors, our co-sponsors for this um, morning's business breakfast. They are Terme Maribor, which is in fact one of the first uh, companies that has seen foreign direct investment uh, come into their company. This uh, investment was closed this year, earlier this year, 
and Ted Mimaribor is an owner of uh, five hotels, including a five-star hotel, the Hotel Habakkuk. And I mention this because actually there's a plastic box going around, and if you put your visitor's card in there, your business card, on offer from our sponsors today, the winner will be selected at the end of this business breakfast, will get a weekend at the Hotel Habakkuk for free. Uh, they did point out that you shouldn't try and book it for Christmas or New Year. <laughs> uh, so that's very interesting, Marianne. I think maybe I will move swiftly on to Tariq. We've heard here that the government acknowledges that foreign direct investment is an important ingredient in developing the tourism sector. What in your experience are the kind of things that foreign direct investors are looking to get from a country in terms of support? Uh, thank you again for the invitation as well. Uh, in terms of a development tourism sector, you could say there's a fairly basic template for investors look for, such as image perception, protection of investments, uh, progressive government relationships, and vision for the future. Uh, in any tourism development, you essentially try to create a, uh, in a hardcore business language mousetrap for tourists to come in stay uh, and you make a lot of income from the taxes and obviously money they spend. Uh, in tourism, many times you have to develop the physical asset. Uh, Dubai and Las Vegas, they literally have to develop the physical assets of the beauty to attract tourists. Uh, Slovenia actually has that already. Uh, Montenegro has it. Uh, it's very rare for a country to have it. Uh, it takes a lot of time to develop if you don't have it. Uh, then once you have it, you just have to utilize it, follow the good map, have a progressive government relationships, do the good image, follow with the business line, look for the investor's interest, and it's a lot of work. And about a five to eight to ten years plan, uh, you can see a lot of results. You don't have to do that, and then you don't see a lot of results. Uh, for example, I think a lot of my work I do is in Montenegro, country came out of, you can say from tourism point of view, nowhere, uh, with a very clear vision that the uh, German uh, DEG has done for the, for the government of Montenegro about 10 years ago. And they have followed those steps. And today in Montenegro we have a major, uh, of course there's a recession everywhere, we have a major investment funds from Metropole to Cateridia to Porto Montenegro to uh, even the latest Stockholm, which is state oil fund of state of Azerbaijan investing in Montenegro because there's a vision. We obviously do not have that in Slovenia. You have very bad press, bad image, uh, difficulty, uh, bureaucracy, inward uh, protectionist culture, etc. I'm not an expert Slovenia, but this is sort of my uh, knowledge of the market. So once you change that and you follow fairly good uh, business strategy, you can develop uh, investments and you will bring investors, but it's a very hard task, especially today. For example, the uh, state of Qatar is very prominent today, and you have a lot of uh, investors, it's a lot of countries, everybody. Everybody essentially flying or trying to attract Qataris. And as to my knowledge, uh, they are only sitting in Montenegro, and uh, to my knowledge, the next stop potentially may be Macedonia or Albania, because they have a very firm, direct uh, presentation purpose, and I think they've been uh, uh, annoying or uh, coming to Doha endlessly the last two years to present themselves. So once Slovenia gets to this track, my view, you have a lot of results. Uh, you don't have to do it, and unfortunately, you may be in this kind of no man's land. There, it's a fairly straight answer. Um, Maya, maybe just following up on that, the impression that I get in Slovenia is that uh, as there is reluctance to open the door to foreign investment. It, there is a kind of cultural thing that says we want to remain kind of where we are, but we would like to have all the benefits and keep it all fairly local. But of course, isn't that smart? It's very smart. So uh, maybe uh, to... to continue where Tariq stop. Uh, if I would be a foreign investor, I would never invest in Slovenia. Because the business uh, environment for investment here, uh, I think it's awful. Uh, for now. But I hope that the state will sort these things out. It's not just, uh, or in the other words, it's not a problem of the Directorate of Tourism. They know uh, what they are doing in, in a sense that how tourism should be developed. Of course, we have disagreements about the vision, 
but uh, still the, the problems are in business environment. Uh, last week we had days of swing and tourism and we discussed the numbers last five years and uh, yes tourism is very prospectus uh, uh, business uh, the, the revenue is growing, the, the hard data is growing, so overnights, uh, tourist visits and so the problems are the costs and we are not competitive in that department I don't know, uh, not just labor because all, all uh, managers are complaining about labor costs of course labor costs but then the energy, uh, the food, uh, all other costs uh, are two to three times bigger than in Austria. You cannot compete on that. So that's uh, uh, that's the huge issue. And for the obstacles that are here in terms of business environment, <coughs> uh, besides uh, labor law, uh, there are others like um, I don't know uh, connectivity uh, to to other destinations. Uh, then. Uh, 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 how the government uh, thinks tourism is uh, number first uh, uh, business. Uh, they are not prioritizing the, the tourism uh, industry as such. So that's for the start, maybe. So this issue of costs is very interesting because actually I was doing something the other way around. And I went to uh, booking.com and I booked a, a hotel for myself in April. <coughs> next year for two people in a four-star hotel and I chose Bled, Lake Annecy, Lago Maggiore and Lake Garda as four places, four destinations and uh, I was offered up uh, three hotels in each one, I picked the first three and the three that were chosen in Bled were Hotel Compass, Ribno and Triglav which I thought was an insurance company. <laughs> I then got Annecy which is uh, offered up Best Western, Novotel, Imperial, uh, sorry, Mercury. And Lago Maggiore was Ramada, the Relay, and uh, another Best Western. And in Garda, it was the Gritti Palace, the Eden, and a company called Enjoy. Uh, the prices for Bled started at 500. The star prices for Annecy started at 1,000. The prices for Lago Maggiore started at 1,200. And the prices in Garda started at 900. For how many so, nights? Uh, one week. One. one week. So you have a high cost structure and then you have very low prices. And for me, uh, what is very, very interesting, Gregor, is that it seems to me that in Lake Bled we have no brands. But you're one of the few people, uh, here in Ljubljana there are two or three now branded hotels, but where are the brands? Why are they not coming in? Well, Alex, to correct you, in Bled we have uh, one brand, it's Best Western Premier, and it's our hotel. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's Hotel Lodge, yes. And it's occupied in that period, so that's why you didn't see it. Uh, 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 Natasha is the manager of Hotel Lodge. <laughs> and also... Finally, some participation. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think uh, I also discussed this morning with, uh, with Tarek, and uh, he's also uh, uh, my guest um, for, uh, for last from last night. Um, and the first question he was, uh, we were, when you introduced us, was, uh, Hey Gregor, why there are no brands? Um, well, we are uh, the first and only branded hotel uh, in Ljubljana uh, after uh, Intercontinental and uh, Holiday Inn were kicked out from our competitive competitors. Uh, why they were kicked out at that moment? Because the management decided they can do better on their own. Uh, because uh, it's too expensive. But uh, if we look at the from a 10-year period already now, uh, since they left, um, the rates went down, the occupancy went down. Uh, and I think also the image of Ljubljana uh, went down, and it's not uh, internationally recognized uh, tourist destination. I think brand is much more than we think here in Slovenia. Even if we go to, uh, to a shop to buy a pair of jeans, they are branded. And we, we buy them because they are branded. It's the same with hotels. I just don't see any other difference. And uh, I think I know from personal experience, um, because Salon is branded, is the most occupied uh, um, hotel in Slovenia. 
our occupancy rate, uh, yearly occupancy rate is in recession times 73%. We can be easily compared to Paris, London, Berlin, New York, you name it. Uh, and of course, average daily rate, we need to discuss about that, but uh, it's in comparison to, to, to some mid scale brands in Europe, we are there. So the brand does, uh, does not just uh, bring you um, uh, more guests, it, it brings you image of the destination. And of course, uh, what, uh, what uh, um, all the previous uh, guests, uh, panelists uh, told uh, today, is that we are in big trouble. Um, of course, we are not recognized. Uh, of course, we need investors. Um, there are no Slovenian investment investors, so we need foreign investors, but foreign investors are more demanding and, uh, uh, and they want more from the government. Uh, and I suggest the government to, to take uh, a good precaution and to, to offer a package deal to every individual um, possible uh, investor. Um, and I think also uh, we have a different uh, issue that we have not mentioned before. Our current ownership of hotels is wrong. It's completely wrong. Okay, there are some few examples, uh, us including, and also Terne um, and but, uh, but majority of other owners of Slovenian hotels are just some financial companies or companies that are, that are uh, that are doing other industries and uh, I don't know why they bought hotels uh, but they are not actually running those hotels and if you want to run uh, the hotel you need, you need to be in love with, you, with the business you do because it's not the most profitable business uh, and uh, you have to be very passionate about it because it's all about the details it's all about the services, it's all about the quality it's all about the details for the guest and you need to surprise your guests every day um, and not just renovate every 10 or 12 years. So I think we, we need to do something with, with current ownership. And regarding, if I go back to the brands, uh, these current owners, uh, they, it's, it's, like a, it's like a national sport. They all think they can do better than the foreigners. They all think they can do better than the Sheraton. Or my favorite is the Four Seasons. For example, I think um, what I suggest, and I, I think uh, this is how also, um, six, let's say Dubai succeeded, um, um, they built up a so-claimed seven-star hotel there, Burcha uh, Al. Of course, uh, nobody can afford it, or just a, a small percentage of people can afford it. It's 1,400 euro per night. But it's a magnet for masses. And they go to Dubai just to see the hotel and they stay elsewhere. Uh, because we don't have uh, natural uh, world heritage, natural or cultural uh, presence here in Slovenia. Slovenia is beautiful, but it's not, it's not a magnet for tourists in, in, a, in a heritage or, or natural beauty way. So we need added value. We need, uh, uh, we need to create uh, attractions in order to to uh, to uh, to get uh, world-class travelers into Slovenia. But for that, we we, do, we just don't need one five-star hotel in Blade or in Ljubljana. We need the whole infrastructure for them for for those guests. That's the issue. Maya, you strike me as somebody who isn't necessarily in favor of this sort of top-end, high luxury, money-consuming tourism sector. Much more a friendlier cozier Slovenian style tourism is always this could wrong. you fight the other side? Wrong, wrong impression. <laughs> I really like four seasons and all luxury uh, products that are offered on the market. Uh, I think that for um, Gregor was explaining destination appeal. Uh, I said first that uh, we have problems in business environment so that it's not very friendly for any investors, not just foreign investors. And the other thing is uh, destination appeal. So in terms of destination appeal, firstly, uh, as Gregor explained, we need luxury brands. Uh, I don't know uh, whether they are UNESCO heritage site, we have some but not enough, or not enough appealing. 
And as I said to my students, uh, church is not enough. If you don't have St. Paul's Cathedral, forget it. It's not in interesting enough. So uh, international brands are needed. Uh, I don't know, some restaurants with Michelin stars, some branded, uh, uh, some branded uh, stores. So if, I don't know, for Russians, for example, but this is stereotype, of course. If you don't have Louis Vuitton or Gucci, forget it. It's not appealing for them to come here or to shop and so on. Uh, so uh, if you want to attract, attract uh, really uh, and to be a player, because right now I'm always saying we are not a big tourism destination. Uh, compare it to, to, to Croatian Istria, uh, we are as big in terms of uh, beds as, I don't know, Porridge or Ruvin. So it's, we are not discussing a big tourism destination. Uh, so it's a need to make a very smart investment uh, to build up as appealing, uh, uh, I don't know, um, symbols as, for example, Burj Al Arab in, in Dubai. Uh, and as Gregor said, we need investors that know what they're doing. We had some investors, foreigner and, and Slovene, that invested, but they were just drawing out the money. They didn't really want to develop the, the, the certain attractions. So maybe I can just throw it to the floor. I was thinking that, uh, I think a lot of topics have been touched upon, but one of the principal ones is that uh, it seems that there's a major challenge in trying to change the image of the country. And maybe there's some reaction to that from the floor. I don't know. I get a, if nobody's going to react, then I'll pick somebody. Because I know that Kevin Morrison works extensively in this area, trying to work with the government in order to work with, not in the tourism sector brands, but large industrial brands that are struggling to bring people into this country. And maybe this is a very important point for me to understand that there is actually deep challenges from the business side to work with the government. Thank you, Alex. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I think Alec, what Alex is referring to is that um, in our private business we are uh, relocating quite a number of foreigners into Slovenia on a corporate level and uh, I can tell you after six, seven years it's a constant daily struggle with the immigration offices. Uh, they're certainly not friendly welcoming at the Pravna and Alta in Ljubljana or in a few other departments. Uh, and it's getting worse and this year has been the worst year for, us for seven years. Um, there is a, an official and an unofficial agenda uh, in certain departments in the government uh, to obviously to create as many jobs for Slovenes as possible, which everybody agrees is a good thing, but not to the detriment of the business. And we've had the occasions this year where the, uh, the uh, department issuing work permits has said better to give a, a, a job to a Slovene who's half qualified for the job and to bring in a non-EU citizen who's fully qualified for the job. And this is in the pharmaceutical industry, so I think that's quite dangerous. Um, and I think it would therefore extend to the travel industry also. Ultimately, if you can't bring experienced people in for a couple of years to share their experiences and also learn from everyone in Slovenia, then the, kind of the, the projects might stop before they get started because you just can't get the permits. And it's a, it's a daily issue and I could give you case study after case study. So we're working on it, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Economic Development uh, Council are working very hard, uh, but not all the ministries are necessarily in agreement at the moment. So. Maybe for you, Marian, it's, uh, sorry. No, uh, let, let Marian answer that first. Okay. Okay. Um, maybe for you, Marian, you're not off the hook. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but so the key issue is one of the key issues is convincing some of these local hotel operators to bring in a, uh, an operating uh, contract, a contract who may decide to bring in somebody from Latin America, who is then going to struggle to even get into the country to do his job. At which point these operators will just say, "Let's go somewhere else." What's your reaction? Uh, well. Um, I could I, I could agree with most of uh, with most of the, the panelists. Uh, I think that uh, the problem is 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 much uh, much deeper. Uh, well, uh, I think the whole uh, the 
whole process started some years ago with a completely wrong uh, model of privatization in Slovenia. And uh, we are facing now as a, as a, not as a big challenge, but really as a big uh, uh, weakness. Uh, not only in tourism, but, but also in, in, in other sectors as well. We just, we just heard uh, about, uh, about some, some, some problems in, in this area. Uh, I, I understand the internationalization of Slovenian economy, and particularly Slovenian tourism, uh, not, not only that we have every year more and more tourists in Slovenia. We urgently need investors, we need uh, um, experts from abroad, I completely, I totally agree with you. Uh, I am the one, for sure, how to say, uh, um, I, I was expected uh, to be, to, and I am actually the one in the government that uh, I'm, I'm fully open. And uh, at, the, at the last uh, uh, foreign direct investment summit, which was held, uh, I don't know, six, week, uh, six weeks ago, uh, also our Minister of Finance um, said, uh, I can assure you that from my perspective, I am very much open but I cannot say for the whole government. And that's, that's the, the, that's, that might be a problem that in, in, uh, in Slovenia as a whole, in our society, uh, you know, uh, everybody knows we need, we need foreign investors. But at the moment when particular uh, portfolio investment is on the table, Immediately, you have some non-governmental non uh, organization or some civil society to give you so many reasons why not to do it. And uh, um, th there are, I don't know why, uh, some 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 backgrounds that uh, um, our um, public interest is that everybody should remain in Slovenian hands. This is completely wrong. Uh, our interest should be wealth of uh, of uh, <coughs> everyday living here in Slovenia. Okay. Jens, you had a quick question. Thanks. I'm Jacqueline Stewart from Slovenia Invest. Um, we're the only commercial real estate company in Slovenia. We're very active in the hospitality business. We've sold four hotels, rented two hotels. Um, done numerous portfolio evaluations, provided asset strategies to the owners of hotels, um, and in fact, we've just been instructed to sell two hotels in lead. Um, in, in my opinion, as a real estate professional in the hospitality industry, the biggest thing that's holding Slovenia back is lack of transparency. This is something I go on and on about in my articles in Finance, time and time again. Um, we're, we're going to really struggle now to put together a convincing investment memorandum for these properties in Bled because we just cannot get the information that we need. Information that's publicly available in every other European country is impossible to come by in Slovenia. Um, so I would, I would urge Mr. Hribar to address this issue immediately. Okay. Without transparency, then there's not going to be any foreign direct investment. Maybe I can just, uh, for a comment from Tarek, you, you've been working in Montenegro for the last two years. This is presumably a very transparent economy. <laughs> How does it work there? Okay. Actually, the, the uh, image may be, may, may be or may not be transparent, but uh, Tony Scholz, who's the development director for the project, actually we're trying to get all permits, zoning, licenses. Uh, he's been working on it for two years. And what I have seen at least Montenegro uh, is the same process I've seen in the United States. Maybe the image of the state is a little different, but the, it's very transparent. And uh, these, you know, calling this era many times to get permits and zoning, etc. Uh, it's crucial transparency. I couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. So several samples of, as I was listening, 
you, you're stating foreign direct investments, foreigners. Actually, you would see that Slovenian uh, owners of the companies are foreigners. So it's, uh, it's vice versa, actually, because the, uh, when you talk about brands, uh, there's a whole armada of knowledge, technical services, sales, marketing, support that the brands have and have developed the last 40, 50 years. And when you say brands, it sounds like, ah, you know, they're going to come in, maybe they steal our money or whatever. But there's an armada of people behind it, so they have extreme value to that. Uh, second point, positioning is very crucial. Mercedes-Benz is actually positioning, Hyundai is trying to develop the position in 10, 20 years. For example, Dubrovnik has an unbelievable old city. Yeah, I'm sure you all be there. It's gorgeous, it's great. Uh, but right in, as you enter Dubrovnik, is a filter hotel. Mm -hmm. So you immediately position yourself as a three-star global jewel, not five-star. Because that's what Hilton is in a global uh, world tourism. Uh, and the best example I use a lot is the Tier Villa Bled, Tito Forma Villa Bled, which is unbelievable beauty. I'm sure you all probably been to it. It's gorgeous. And I compared it to Santi Stefan, which is another gorgeous place in, uh, in Montenegro. In 2000, they were all, both uh, old assets, Rome ruined down by time, charging 75 euros per day uh, in 2000. And then uh, Montenegro government takes a uh, proactive stance to let the tender, arrest this group, wins it from Greece, they do a big development, and work on it, work, work, it's a lot of headache, uh, and they open as a Amman hotel and resorts, sorry, Amman resorts. And the lowest price per room now is 750 euro, which is great because when you talk about Montenegro, you just say Amman is up and running. You already said what Montenegro is about because everybody knows what Amman is. And while I believe it will take a little black, former is still 75 euros per day. So it's very simple in 10 years. So position is really up to the government. Thank you very much. We have a question here. Well, actually, more, more, more of a comment. My name is Igor Popov, I'm ambassador of Macedonia. And I'd like uh, to comment uh, as, as uh, a tourism connoisseur, I would like to think I am a member of our Board of Tourism and Mr. Kriba is our, our advisor on many issues. Uh, well, just briefly, my, my, uh, my dad who passed this January was director of the U.S. National Tourist Office and he served both in Athens and in Amsterdam. And both Greece and Holland being mega powers in tourism, I'll take some credit on knowing what, what, what's going on. In the, as, as for the Four Seasons, I'm on the other side of the river. I'm a Ritz Carlton fan. I was engaged with <laughs> a lovely lady in Washington who was the general manager of the Ritz Carlton, visited 29 Ritz Carltons. And, um, well, what I'll say for Slovenia, it's the best uh, value for money destination you can get. And this is not a uh, paid PR because I'm a, well, a very, very friendly country's ambassador, but I, I tend to make my brand name by being very objective. I would say Slovenia has a large number of expertise and uh, our, our professor is one of them and it's good she's been critical. <coughs> Sometimes in the Balkans we make, uh, and then we do still consider Slovenia from our part of your part of the Balkans, although it's a very, very European, very modern country. Um, one thing is we are sometimes too critical. I'm not saying the issues that, that were respectively uh, mentioned by uh, the gentleman about the immigration office and the lady talking about real estate are not real, I'm sure they are, but they have nothing to do with what the Republic of Slovenia is doing in, in, uh, in terms of tourism and developing tourism since and before its independence. Slovenia is a very, very uh, hospital and friendly um, surrounding and I'll just put the, to, when we talk about tourism and we, we, I think we can't talk about tourism today in general because there's so many types of tourism, we have congressional tourism, mountain tourism, medical tourism, uh, thermal tourism, uh, wine tourism, that, that in general I think Slovenia is a leader in, in what they've developed as a brand in rural tourism. First of all, the quality you get, uh, price and uh, rural, rural, like Metiski tourism we call it Slovenia, just for my dear friend. And, uh, and we're trying to copy that, that, that model which I think is based, first of all, on basic quality uh, of, of organic products and, and family values of hospitality, which I think is a bigger brand name than any other other, other brand can bring. Not that I'm against uh, brands, of course I am, I am for brands, but when we talk about brands entering Slovenia, and most of the people think it is a great challenge, so did I when I came here. But I've realized that, that um, brands have entered there where the market allowed them to. You see the Kempinski Hotel in, in Porto, which is probably the best sold hotel in the world. There's no money in this world, you can get a room in July and August, you know. 
It's even better, better so than the northern Greece in, in July when we attack our neighbors with our money. <laughs> so uh, it's one of the things. I think uh, Slovenia is doing uh, enormous efforts in, in, uh, in informing the world about its possibilities and beauties. I don't think that Slovenia lacks any kind of uh, protected heritages and beauties because it is, a, I wouldn't like to compare it to Switzerland, but it's the first thing that comes to my mind, plus it has a wonderful sea coast which is developed. Um, on the other hand, when, when talking about challenges to making Slovenian tourism a living sector of the economy, it is, and day by day it is. And, uh, and when we see the, the, way the, the way the thermal tourism is going, and I, and I welcome the sponsor, I'm a very, uh, I don't know who, who's representing the sponsor today, I'm, I'm, a, uh, I'm a great uh, fan of, <laughs> of Thermal Marble, I think, I think it's, it's a very good buy, I, I really think it's going to get even better. We love Havagok Hotel, and the efforts you're doing to bringing the geothermal water by, actually by trucks from from the other side of the town. I mean, I visited all the all the all the thermal um, uh, localities in Slovenia, and each and every one is different and very very attractive in its own way. Because I'm also trying to not really copy paste but develop uh, the geothermal tourism. So briefly, I would like to say that on the light side, Slovenia is a is a great example. It's a it's a leader to how business can be done in tourism and uh, most of the countries in the region do copy it and I just wanted to put the other side of the perspective with no respect to, to, the, to all the other comments. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the mic. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any more questions from the floor? The ambassador. He always has the final word. Is this the final word? I hope it's not. Thank you, Alex, and uh, thank you, Igor, and my colleague, uh, for a very helpful corrective. And what that makes me think of is how very often the view of Slovenia is so different from those who come in from the outside to the view that the Slovenes themselves have of their country. And it's a point I often make publicly, which is that Brits who come here, and many Brits do come here, think, what a fantastic country, and cannot understand why a large number of the Slovenes are critical uh, of what's going on in their country, and in a way, rather too negative. And that's brought home to me every time friends come to stay. And most Brits who come here, many of them, have kind of repeat business. Once they've come here, they love it, and they love coming back. Uh, I was interested in what Gregor said about not having a kind of magnet in terms of world heritage. That may be true, but in terms of a magnet in terms of natural beauty, I think you do have a magnet. And I think that's one of the strengths that Slovenia needs to play to, and I think is already played to. It's part of the strategy that Nadia has and that Maya's worked on in the past, which is to work out where your strengths lie. You can't be all things to all men, so you need to play to your assets, whether it's a boutique tourism destination, particularly strong in eco-tourism, very strong in farm tourism, Kmetsky tourism, as Igor says, and so on. And that needs to be the basis of your marketing pitch, which to a large extent it is. But I also agree with those commentators who are talking about transparency, Jacqueline's absolutely right, and about the importance of opening up the economy to investment. And this is a much broader picture. And it's great that you have Kempinski. I think it's the only truly five-star hotel in this country, and they do have very good occupancy. I quite often go there, and I know the managing director very well. But therein lies an interesting anecdote as well. You referred, Alex, to uh, the pricing here. Uh, and with the Kempinski Hotel, as many of you will know, it's owned based at events, so we're looking to sell it. Uh, and without revealing more than I should because of my source, uh, I know that there was a potential buyer very interested in buying the Kempinski Hotel who was prepared to put in a very high sum, uh, but as part of that sum, as part of 30% of it, was going to be devoted to raising the whole standard of Portoroche, including their boutiques, their restaurants, their casino and the beach and everything else about it, so that not only do you have the Kempinski as the jewel in the crown, but you have a really five-star resort to go to, because that's the difficulty with the Kempinski, the level of the hotel as well above the level of the town. And unfortunately, Sturmens turned the offer down, because they really wanted money just for the hotel. So it goes back to the ownership structure, which Marion, you were referring to, uh, and the fact that there are a number of companies that own big tourism infrastructure without really being experts in the tourism sector. And it goes back to the need for the Slovenia's economy to open up more than it is doing. And I think this government, under 
uh, the coalition led by Yanis Yansha, is pushing in the right direction in terms of the legislation it's looking to bring in on the Slovenia sovereign holding, which our beloved Yanis Bencina is working hard on, and indeed on uh, what they're doing more widely in the economy with a bad bank, non-performing loans, and so on. Uh, and a lot will remain to be seen whether they succeed, because there are NGOs, trade unions, members of civil society who are opposing opening up, because there is still a kind of residual resistance to the idea of large foreign buyers buying up many of your natural assets and big assets in this country. But I think it takes a crisis of this magnitude and depth to kind of force the opening up of the economy that's needed here. I think more and more people are understanding that the Slovenian approach of gradualism and keeping 40% of the economy in state hands is not the recipe for returning to growth in this country. And so I wish the government success, including your Directorate for, for Tourism and attracting foreign investment in that respect. And we ambassadors and embassies who are here are very keen to work with you on that. We've all been itching to help in terms of bringing in foreign investors, but there's a lot that needs to be done on the government side in order to provide that enabling environment. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that leads perfectly into the last seven minutes of this session, which is that one of the aims is to take away some points from this that we can maybe push gently with the government and other stakeholders. And maybe I can ask people now to maybe draw up some conclusions that we can put on the notice board here on the flip chart and we can walk away as parking spaces for dealing with at a later time. But is there anything from the floor that you've got from this conversation or you would like to put onto the agenda uh, that you think is relevant and important? Good morning, everybody. Yeah, and a Council General of Nepal here in Slovenia. Earlier, I was uh, uh, leading one international post-graduate MBA program in the International Center for Promotion of Enterprise. We had educated 600 managers from 46 different countries. And when I took those managers to study to all of the Western European countries to develop networking for people for their future career, when they come to return back to me, or very nice because we took some round once from Italy and another time through Austria and Germany and so And they used to say, hey, what's happening in Slovenia? Such a beautiful country. I see now it has so many better natural sources than in suppose, Switzerland and Austria and so And why why they are not doing promotion and so Why? What is the reason behind it? You see? And, uh, there are a lot of students that we have educated around 300 managers only in India. And, uh, and they are the same opinion on all the time treatment. So, I will not be very long. I would like to say, especially Mr. Mario Fever, who is uh, uh, leading the tourism sector, that the government would put tourism as an, one of the important strategies for Slovenia. Because you have got such a big, uh, really rich natural sources as the uh, unreserved uh, uh, paid store and also our uh, unreserved uh, opal. Yes, but that's uh, very, very true. And uh, really, please uh, put a lot of efforts. Uh, I'm, I have become a um, Slovene citizen, uh, and I would like to see Slovenia really will have a lot of prosperity and known to the world. And it is, it ties these, uh, these assets for that, you see. You can see from one side way in this uh, lonely planet, this uh, hotel, this Celica. Uh, it was considered one of the best uh, in the world. You see, there are so many things. Please, uh, I, might, I would like to encourage the government that you um, gave a lot of emphasis and as uh, Professor Maya also told, let us be a little bit pretty, but at the same time, our uh, Madame is told, let us develop the transparency without transparency, nothing will happen. When my students came, I said, please, if you want to be friend with me, uh, besides uh, these my office hours, you should be very transparent with me. I don't uh, agree with any hypocrisy. I don't appreciate it. And it, it is for the country very, very important. And I thank you, for the speakers. Thanks, thanks. Thank you. A very impassioned plea there. We have another quick uh, comment here. 
Nito Kovacic, living in Convention Bureau. Uh, I'm doing in the fields of meetings industry for the last 10 years and I, I, I work with all the destinations and all the uh, private sector and uh, public sector in Slovenia and also abroad and I realized we as the Slovenians and I also lived one quarter of my life abroad I realized as the Slovenians we are afraid of international knowledge we are afraid that somebody will come in and say something better as we do and we lose our job so that's why we, we keep <laughs> Keep it close, even if we struggle, we keep it. Before we die, we open and let it in. So that's the, that's the positive side of the, of the crisis, that one day we will open because that is the only way to survive. Uh, I, I, in my field, I see we need to bring international experience. My strategic advisor for the last six years is a UK uh, leading uh, professional in our business. And I'm also working most of the with the British uh, private sector because they are the most experienced in this. So, uh, and also I, I see my industry is also, also opening up, more we bring this, but you just have to keep on going that they see there is no fear and we see with them in Maribor, uh, the company hasn't closed, people has not lost jobs, maybe you have come and there is of course some change, but there is, uh, if I, I see if a foreign investor comes and opens a hotel, he cannot or she cannot take it to to foreign country because it's here. So. We should be not be afraid that uh, Slovenia will lose uh, its tourism. Uh, it, it can only develop it. But we have to be self-confident. And I think, as uh, also other speakers already said, Slovenia is from one point a jewel. On the other side, we are also the the people working in this industry are passionate about, as what Gregor said, about this. In other countries, you have to pay for a smart here, you get it for free. But somehow. We should find this strategic alliance between foreign ex experts, investors, and Slovenian quality. Thank you. So maybe just to summarize, I think one of the points of saying is that, which we can park here, is how can the British Chamber help in getting, mobilizing maybe some more expertise to work maybe with government as well, um, and more generally in the private levels. sector at all levels, and see if we can try and arrange something on that, at that level, strategic level uh, advisory services. Yeah. Any comments, any more comments from the Hi, I'm Tamsamit and I'm Maribor. One of our greatest problems in Maribor is that we as a hotel are selling the destination. So we urge that uh, there is no proper destination management without any help and like working together. So this is our main problem and we'd like to maybe um, get some help or be listened and um, uh, uh, get people to understand that we have uh, uh, we have to deal with this problem every single day. Okay. And from the panelists, last but not least. Uh, if I start, if I may. Yes. Uh, maybe just about criticism. Uh, don't get me wrong, I love my country. Uh, the problem is about brand recognition. If uh, perhaps Andrew, please admit that you didn't know much about Slovenia and Slovenia beauty when you came. And so in main, main markets, they don't know what we have. That's why I said we need some brands uh, to make easier for, for the tourists, for the guests to come here so they know what they're getting. I've heard of blade, that was all. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so my three points are, uh, we need to uh, set, have some international brands. We need for the government to uh, make business environment more appealing to all investors. And third, uh, let's say increase uh, the destination appeal to Several levels, I won't. Maybe to Gregor. We need highly promoted destination. Uh, of course, brands would help us to promote. For example, I'm a fan of uh, Four Seasons again. <laughs> <laughs> Ritz Carlton is my second. <laughs> but I think uh, where, where, let's say, okay, um, of course, it's probably irrealistic to, to talk about Four Seasons coming into Slovenia, but, but why not? If they, if they would come, they would invest. Uh, 4 million euro uh, for the first year uh, 
Yeah, Wheel of Lid would be a nice. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> but the Four Seasons, whenever, the, wherever they open a hotel, they invest four million euro for the first year of operation, only for marketing. And uh, we have how much? Five million? Seven. Seven now. Yeah. So for the whole country. For the whole country. So this this would make a huge difference. So we need a highly promoted destination. Uh, we need uh, better air uh, access to the country. We have very uh, we haven't talked about that much, but this is a huge problem. Uh, Adir Airways is struggling, and uh, they are not even flying to to Paris or or London. Uh, and of course, we need very efficient destination management. Uh, destination management. Destination management. Yes, of course, I agree here with with my colleague Mika uh, that. Um, Maybe we need some international expertise to, to, uh, to show us. We have done this in the past uh, and it's working quite well in Ljubljana already, but we have other sub-destinations in Slovenia that need to discover that as well. And I think we need uh, smart ownerships of, of existing properties, which means whoever is not passionate about, uh, passionate about uh, hospitality industry, they should sell to those that are. Tarek, yes, maybe passionate about the industry, but passionate about money, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> from from my point, of view, yes. From my point of view, the uh, what tourism industry does is uh, it helps your well-being of your citizens. <clears throat> so as structurally, as far as the structure, Slovenia is beautiful, and you don't really have to build anything because you're a gorgeous country. Uh, but you have maybe 100 euro a net from every tourist out of which 20 or 30 goes to your infrastructure or, or well-being of your citizens. And what I see with buyers is essentially if you do a proactive approach with brands and you position yourself well, and this is a 10-year plan in my view, you can get 200. So essentially you, are, you need to improve the well-being of your citizens. That's what tourism industry is about. In Croatian point of view, I think everybody that I deal with the industry agrees fiasco creation industry in terms of trying to position themselves uh, because I'm not aware of any major investors that made any returns in Croatia and the approach of we will uh, save our coastline not to become Spain and be protectionist and there's actually all, all you're doing is hurting your citizens it's not true you can develop countries sustainably we have brands as well so essentially citizens lose at the end of the day Thank you. I'm going to leave Marian with the last, last words, because you've been in the hot seat all day. Okay. And uh, I have one more question here, and then you have the final one. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm the Romanian ambassador here in uh, Slovenia, Kostin Guadjur. Just a very quick, uh, straightforward question, but it was just uh, answered uh, uh, by Mr. Uh, Tarek. Uh, it was about uh, matching uh, the desire for, for growth, which is normal for business, with the, the stated objective of uh, sustainable development for, for the sector. And it was quite ambitious, so what I've heard uh, in the beginning, that by 2016 the, the entire sector would be self- uh, and, and uh, uh, sustainable development uh, based. So uh, how do you plan on, on, on uh, matching these two objectives? Because they don't seem in, in the first place uh, as, as uh, achievable. So. And Marianne, over to you, the final yeah. word. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, number one, if I were a foreign investor, I would have invested in Slovenia because it makes profit. Slovenian sector is doing well and almost every, um, every company is, is, is making profit. So that's number one. Uh, number two, destination management. Very important issue. I would just like uh, to, to remind uh, young lady over there that uh, we provide uh, quite a reasonable amount of money for your destination management uh, organization, which is Zavod uh, za Turizm yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, you, in spite of being the European uh, capital of culture, they use only 10% of available uh, amount, uh, amount of, 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 of money. Uh, I really regret uh, to say that, but uh, that's, that's the truth. 
but but more uh, more important is uh, I would like to to give very clear message to all of you uh, to 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 um, prospective uh, investors and developers and so on real estate uh, experts. Um, Slovenia will open. Is open. Slovenia is opening at the moment. Uh, there will be a lot of uh, different uh, possibilities to invest. Uh, please contact me myself personally. I will give you uh, all the, the, the. So I, I will be at your disposal anytime because it is our high priority. Uh, not because we urgently need it but because we want to develop and we want to open up and we want to open our minds. Thank you. Well, that's a very positive statement from the director. That's great. I think fantastic. Just to conclude, first of all, thank you very much to you for coming. Without it, it wouldn't be possible. Without you, it wouldn't be possible. I'd like to thank our sponsors again, Tebe Maribor. And as one final wrap-up, uh, we're probably going to plan a small action team, let's call it. It's going to look at some of the issues that we've parked here. Uh, we're going to find participants from inside the British Chamber and outside, so if anybody wants to be part of it, just get in touch with me, with Tina or Maya, and then we'll start to put together an action team that basically can start to take some of these issues to relevant uh, stakeholders so we can then generate some energy from this wonderful breakfast this morning. Thank you for coming, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Alex, the lucky draw. Yeah. Oh, the draw! <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was going to go. <laughs> Who draws? Alex. <laughs> you know, you have to close your eyes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> transparency. We need transparency. <laughs> Uh, that's, uh, well, Mario is closing in Poyaku. It's uh, in the Sado. Ah. It's Romania. Bravo. <laughs> we forgot to mention that as part of that prize, you have to become a member of the British Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.